Welcome to today's video, where we're going to take you on a journey of crafting an incredible Hulk figurine that stands a towering 2 feet 2 inches tall. What makes this video unique is that we'll be focusing on the creative problem solving that went into the process. So, let's dive in. We started our journey by 3D printing the incredible Hulk model, which is free to download at the link below. But here's the catch, we faced some unexpected issues along the way. To overcome these challenges, I had to get creative. I adjusted print settings, added supports, and even paused and resumed prints. One of the major problems I ran into, was a failed print. This was completely my fault and not a problem with the model. To save filament I adjusted my settings to 0% infill. This was not an issue with 6 of the 7 parts. However, the center piece that all the other pieces connect to has concave or inset areas. By having no infill I essentially removed the supports that were needed for the overhang on the inside of the part. With all the printed parts in hand, it was time to put the Hulk together. But once again, not everything went smoothly. Another problem I faced was mechanical. I did not realize, but when I was printing the lower and the upper torso, which includes the face and head, a coupler failed. This coupler failure led to major under-extrusion in some areas and very bad layer lines. I had intentionally slowed down the print speed to get the best quality print and save myself having to sand for hours on end. Now that I have bad layer lines I will still have to sand a little, but I'm going to try to add some texture during the painting process. This should hide a lot of the layer lines. The last problem I faced was a top-heavy figure. Because I had to increase the infill from 0 to 5%, in the upper parts, I needed to add weight to the legs I had already printed. To make sure the Hulk stood tall and strong, I used some techniques beyond just using super glue. PLA welding, which uses a soldering iron to melt two pieces together, was done at each seam. After that was complete I melted PLA filament into the seam to fill in the gap. Lastly, to help hide the seam line I added Bondo Spot putty, but you can also use wood filler. You may have noticed that when I was applying the super glue, I tried to stay back from the edge of the seam. I did this to avoid burning the adhesive when I was PLA welding. Heating superglue into a vapor can cause blindness and respiratory problems. Always wear proper personal protective equipment and work in a properly ventilated space. Off screen, there is a high powered fan blowing fumes away from me. My soldering iron does not have a temperature setting. Although it looks like I am moving quickly, this video is sped up around 7 times the normal speed. You will have to judge how slow or fast you will need to go based on your equipment. You want to avoid staying in a spot too long and melting a hole through your model. To support the inset areas on the torso where the other parts connect. I had to use a higher density infill. This caused the piece to be top heavy. To overcome this, I added weight to the feet and legs. Before attaching the legs I drilled a hole where it connects, so the hole would be hidden. After making the hole I funneled in a couple of pounds of aquarium gravel. Now that the Hulk was assembled, it was time to give him the look of a bronze statue that has been weathered and now has a patina. To overcome the print quality issues without sanding for hours more. I decided to try to add texture during the painting process. Adding texture will help hide the layer lines and other minor imperfections. At least that is the hope. I added two coats of white primer before using hammered metal paint as the final primer, before moving on to the bronze paint. Once I began applying the bronze paint, I realized I should have sanded the final primer coat to get the paint to adhere better. Instead, I just ended up brushing on three coats of bronze paint.
may notice here that the layer lines are not nearly as visible as they were after the white primer was applied. Especially on the face and neck. Luckily the hammered metal texture has worked and I did not have to spend countless hours sanding. This paint is not cheap. It costs about twice as much as a regular can of paint and primer. Now it is time to add the Metal Masters bronze paint. This is a special paint that will oxidize quickly when sprayed with an oxidizing agent. The trick is to spray the oxidizer when the paint is wet. The instructions say you can apply it with a brush or spray bottle. I like the spray bottle method because it gives the patina a more natural look. Due to the size of this hulk, I will not apply the oxidizer over the entire piece all at once. If I did that, the paint where I started would be dry before I have finished. Instead, I will apply the paint to about a quarter of the figure and then spray on the oxidizer. I am not worried about repainting areas or overspraying when I move on to the next section. It only takes about 30 minutes for the treated areas to oxidize and dry. I am sure this will vary, based on the humidity and temperature levels where you are doing your work. I live in the desert, so it is hot and dry when I am working on this project. And there you have it folks, our two foot tall, fully assembled, and beautifully finished Incredible Hulk. Throughout this journey, I encountered numerous challenges, but it's the creative solutions that make the final result truly incredible. So, the next time you embark on a 3D printing and assembly project, don't be discouraged by unexpected obstacles. Embrace them, get creative, and you might just end up with something truly remarkable. If you found this video helpful or inspiring, Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more exciting projects, and don't forget to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Until next time, happy crafting!